day 16 and it is a late one and I have had one old fashioned and a diet coke and I'm still going to attempt this so we'll see how it goes um we've got um kind of a tricky one today um <clears throat> so we've we've essentially got a set of uh, valves with tunnels between them and um our job and and if we open the valves which takes so it takes one minute to travel through a tunnel and one minute to travel one minute to turn a valve and we want to turn each valve releases a certain amount of steam and we want to release the maximum steam in the time um, that we have which is 30 minutes to save some elephants i guess um and so there's like a you need to kind of trade off a few things when you're moving around. And it's not immediately obvious how you make that trade off. Um, it's clear that there is a way through and it's not just choosing the one that seems most like has the highest, you know, flow rate and moving straight there because, well, you'll see. Um, so you've got to be strategic and it's kind of, it's almost a problem that you would have to think about as a person. It's not something that you've got an obvious intuition for. So, um, uh, the first thing I did was was tra transform this data into something that could go into graph is wasn't coding. It was just fiddling around with the ASCII uh, here and transformed it into this format. So this is my real input. And so you can see, I mean, the first thing that I notice is a lot of cells that don't matter. Um, we're never going to, essentially this this is two steps apart from this, and we're never going to want to ever go here for any reason other than to get to another cell. So the first thing I thought was, oh, okay. Well, given these, we've got these intermediary cells, maybe we can just eliminate them, and then we won't have to, we'll, we'll be able to reduce down the logic that we have to do. And I, I explored this for a while. I actually don't think it helps very much at all. Um, and and but it's kind of interesting to look at it's just interesting to see kind of it's just nice it's just nice isn't it um anyway so i did that and then i did it with the trial um and you can see that here so this is the trial data you can see it's got this these two kind of limbs here you can shortcut all the way down to this limb as well and go all the way down here um and what actually happens is we go from a to D to B to J to H to E and then to C. So not maybe the most obvious sequence of events. You might think, okay, D, great. Uh, maybe then H or okay, J, maybe then J. So it, it sort of makes sense, but there's a bit of, it's not obvious. So I had a I had a lot of thinking about this. Try to see a way, and you can see some of this working here. Um, trying to avoid getting into the zone where you've got kind of factorial of seven or fifteen um, to solve your problem, which of course isn't going to work because factorial fifteen is a comically large number. Uh, so I tried to just work out. I just, just sort of follow the logic a bit, and I sort of programmed out. Um, these sort of you know transitions here anyway so in the end i figured out this i think you can make the choices with the following logic so yeah. don't worry about the rest of the graph at all um don't worry about the rest of the graph if you're at point a you've got three choices and let me just refocus myself if you're at point a you've got three choices move to bb or move to dd or move to ii um, and um, the 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 way you make this choice is by um, calculating the value of the graph that you're in after you've made that move. So if we're at BB, then essentially the relative value of the graph at this point is um, the sum of all of the cells we could reach um, less the distance time, time to travel the distance, less the valve time um, multiplied by the value of this, um, the flow rate. So you can see with BB, um, we could go from BB, if we go here, we could go to AA, in which case we get nothing, or BB, 
um, we could just turn the valve here, in which case we get 364. Um, we could go to C, C and get 54, or we could go to D, D, in which case we'd have to travel two steps, but we'd get quite a lot, so we get 520. Um, or we could go to E, E, or F, F, or G, and so on. So you can, you can see that the value of the graph, the value open to us, um, <clears throat> can be higher or lower depending on the choice that we make. And it so turns out that DD is the right, is the highest, the choice to go to DD um, optimizes the total value available to us left. Um, so um, uh, that that's the one that we want to pick essentially, because it's the highest value. I'm just sort of getting a little perturbed by noticing the similarity in these numbers, <laughs> 1561. 1651. Mm. I'm not 100% sure that this will actually work. It's the best idea I've got. Um, if it doesn't work, then I guess we'll try something else. But, oh gosh, I mean, it is just, surely that's a coincidence, right? Let me just sum these up. 1561. Yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah, because uh, each each choice also kind of trades off other things. Yeah, so I think it's fine. <laughs> I think it still works. Um, I'm, I, do I want to just check this a little bit more? I might just check this a little bit later on. So let's say we're at minute 17 and we're at valve H, H. Well, of course we need to go to GG then anyway, so. I don't know. I think I think it's fine. I think I'm just going to go with it. Um, so I've ended up coming up with the following, uh, and and the, the only bit left was I needed to find the distances from every cell to every other cell. So I came up with an algorithm for that, um, which I think is fine, um, fine enough anyway. So I think that's fine. Um, I come up with a state, a cell, and a uh, bit of an algorithm, bit of a sort of loop here. Um, and I think that I think I think we're good. So essentially the algorithm, the algorithm is you've got you're at a cell, you've got three choices or a certain number of choices. And you want to take the choice that leads to the highest value of the full graph according to the algorithm that you go through every cell and calculate the value of the cells that it's mapped to um, according to the current time minus the distance minus the turning time. So that's that's the idea. I, the reason I'm sort of hesitating is because um, this is essentially calculating the value of the next step after taking this step. And I'm, I'm, what I'm not 100% sure of is, does is the value of the step after that influential or not. I don't think that it is. I think if we just optimize for the specific choices that we have, I think it's okay. So it wasn't okay, it turns out. Um, it was t a terrible idea. It didn't work at all. Gosh, my fringe is getting long. Honestly, it's not usually like this. Um, so yeah, that was wrong. That was wrong. And uh, so I blew the hour limit. I, I I spent a bunch of time this morning re-going over it and, you know, just completely, well, not completely, but essentially wrong.
Um, the problem is, as I suspected, but did not um, decide to follow at the time, um, <clears throat> the next step does matter. It matters quite a lot. And so the problem with this is that if you think, oh, all right, well, we'll just count the next step in it then, and then the step after that, the step after that, you get, um, uh, essentially, you get a problem where, okay, so um, if you want to model this, model this out, you more or less have to do some, do a factorial. So you've got to take your seven possibilities times by the six, that's one less than the one you've already got, by four, three, two, one. And this gets you out to 50, 40 combinate, 50, 40 paths that you could be taking to visit all of the, all of the cells on the graph. Um, and times by three, essentially, because each of these options. <clears throat> and, and the problem with this is that we don't end up just having seven, um, which is the number of kind of meaningful cells here. We end up having 15. And it turns out that if you do the same with 15, 15 times 14 times 13 times, et cetera, what you get is a ridiculously large number which turns out is this. And that is not, that takes a long time, it turns out, to operate that many times. So there's there's a very large number of paths through this graph to check if you want to do it this way. If you want to say, okay, let me try this, and then 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 this. Oh, and I'll just tweak the last one. Then you, you've got to, you know, it's not going to work. And, and this is what I found. Um, it first it started off making the wrong decisions, and then it, when I tried to kind of make it smarter, I ended up running into sort of very large numbers quite quickly. So I was a bit stumped, if I'm honest, um, and um, just sort of stared at this stuff for a long time. Sort of looks a bit occult some of this now. Anyway, so at what I ended up, so I didn't just sort of spending some time with the. Um, with the, with different ways of looking at the example of the data, et cetera. And after a number of hours and a lot of thinking, um, not uh, at night, uh, this is the morning, you'll have noticed, um, <clears throat> I, I, I happened upon, I think, something that, that, that will work. Um, <clears throat> and it's, it, it's, pretty obvious when you see it it's pretty simple um i imagine that if um if you knew it was there you'd you'd probably start explaining it by saying you just need to because it's it's that simple um i i mean i hope you're not watching this the third time me round doing it um because i i anyway so <clears throat> when you've got problems like this where you say okay let's start with d then let's try every other one let's try every other one try every other one there are a few kind of ways of reducing that um, and I'm not kind of, I'm not a brilliant mathematician or anything, but the way I understand it is you could say, okay, can I work out which one needs to be the last one? Can I say, even without knowing all of the other ones that come before it, can I say that I know CC should be the last one here? And so you look at it and think, well, it is the smallest one. Could we just say the last one has to be the smallest one? It turns out no, no, I don't think you can, because what if the smallest one was really close and, the, and a bigger one was really far away? That wouldn't work. You'd need to you'd need to um, adjust for the for that fact and a number of other facts as well. <laughs> Apologies for the coughing. Um, so that that doesn't work. You can't fix this one. And and also, you, you, if you sort of said, well, maybe you can fix the last two. It's not necessarily that easy. You could say, okay, if I'm at EE, then and I've only got CC to go to, yes, CC's got to be the next one. That that that's a sort of fact, regardless of how far away it is. But when you get to this point, you don't necessarily know that you've not visited BB yet. So you can't say if we're at EE, then CC is the right solution. You need to say, okay, if I know all these, then CC's got to be the right solution. And if I know all these, then you know, EE and CC have probably got to be the right solution. So, you know, you, you can sort of start to see 
something here. Um, but it's not necessarily very clear how you kind of, in a sense, you're sort of saying, okay, if we knew all the first ones, we'd know the last one. And that is useful. Um, but but by itself, maybe you need to figure out how you're going to get the first ones. And <clears throat> But if we were able to get this, these first ones, then maybe it would be easier. So um, you can also go the other way. Like, is there a way of knowing which one DD is? Since we can't know the last one necessarily, could we know what the first one has to be? Could we say, if we can fix DD and we can know in a, in a finite time, not a really long time, um, like a small amount of time, if we could somehow set, if we could know what DD was, this would make this problem simpler. And then if we could then know what BB was, well, this would make this problem simpler. And so you can see how it kind of decomposes. If we did have a means of knowing what the first item was, the rest of the problem gets easier. And I I, I don't know, but I, I think that this might be called dynamic programming. I don't know. Should we look at the Wikipedia page? Dynamic programming. Simplifying a complicated problem by breaking it down to simpler sub sub problems in a recursive manner. So yes, if if you can find a way, I think I think this is what this is. But I don't know. Don't don't go and talk to your math professor about it because I I probably wrong. So um, I sort of thought I couldn't really see a way that we could figure out what DD was. Like why should DD be here and not here? I mean we know some stuff about this combination. Um, what we do know is that any swap ought to make this, ought to not increase this number. If this is the highest, we can definitely say that any swap here, if we swap DD and BB, that should make it worse. If we swap BB and B and, and JJ, that should make it worse. If we swap CC and EE, that should make it worse. All the same. So we can probably know that, but this is coming from the right answer. So that doesn't really help us much. So I decided to start swapping around and see what I saw. Um, and I, I did sort of get to the idea that I think this just sort of confirmed some of my thinking that if if you're at HH, then the relative positions of all the items afterwards don't change. So you could say this remains the same, this remains the same. If you're at HH, no matter where you are, then the relative position of E and CC don't change. The, the minutes change, but everything else is the same. So that's kind of interesting. So um, then I, 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 I used it. So I, as you know, in this process, I've been planning first, coding second, and the idea is to get to the um, right answer, essentially right algorithm before writing any code, because I've got this problem of, you know, sort of muddling around in the code too much and not thinking enough. Um, but I've been a little suspicious. I've just, over the past couple of steps, I've just been thinking, mm, I kind of find myself avoiding some costly planning steps. Like I could just model this whole thing out with, you know, simulate it and see what happened. And that would give me some information to fuel my planning. So ideally my planning process would involve a bit more back and forth between the code and the, the planning. And I haven't sort of set it up that way annoyingly, which is fine. I mean, it's a challenge, right? It's interesting learning something from it. Um, uh, but but because I'd already gone to the lead mode, lead, lead um, achievement, then I thought, well, I may as well just try kind of simulating stuff. And I had an idea that if we could say that, let's say we had DD. So in this example here, which is the, the let's say called the right sequence, DD being in the right place means that um, any swap below it in principle cannot increase the total value of the chain because otherwise it wouldn't be the right answer. So given that DD is in its right place, we can say that if we swapped B, B, and J, J, that should make things worse. And if we swapped J, J, and H, H, that would make things worse. E and J, J, that would make things worse. So it would seem like if we're on the right track, 
if we've got DD in its right place, then maybe um, we could say that if DD wasn't in its right place, every combination we could find without DD in its right place will be worse than if DD was in its right place. So let, let me demonstrate this for you with some code. Because I, I find my I feel myself losing comprehension um, very quickly. Uh, so let's put this in the right order, um, which is uh, DD, PB, JJ, HH, EE, CC. Right. So this is already running, I think. Oh gosh, sorry. Let me. Um, also just uh, maybe to make this a little easier to see. So with everything in its right place, then um, we get 1651 as we should. So that's good. Now, what if we were to um, move DD out of its right place? And let's say we had BB in here. Um, so let's, let's try that. It's less. So um, we can say that having BB here maybe is worse. What if we had JJ here? 1654, and we're looking for 1651 to beat. So I'll write that down as well. Uh, and let's try flipping them around a little bit. And let's try BB at the top, HH at the top, EE at the top. And sort of no matter what order we're in, it seems like if we have DD in the right place, let's say we look at this combo, if we swap e DD and EE, it's worse. If we swap DD and CC, it's worse. And if we swap DD and HH, it's also worse than having DD at the top. So DD seems to, for any combination, if DD is at the top, sort of no matter what it is, it's the best. And then we can, we can once we know DD is at the top, we can eliminate DD from the combinations and try it with the next step down. So um, let's say that uh, we think the next one should be HH. Can we find, uh, if we swap, um, uh, let's say EE and HH, do we get better than, so let's actually say, let's say, because we don't know what the top one is. Let's say we've worked out DD gets us the best. And so our first, our best one's 1477. Uh, at which point, let's try swapping, let's try having EE at the front rather than HH. So that's worse. Let's try having CC at the top rather than HH. That's worse. Let's try having JJ at the top. That's worse. Let's try having BB at the top. That's worse. Wait a minute, I think I've done that wrong because we actually want BB to be at the top. So is having HH here better? Yes, it is. 
a me again in the editing room. Uh, this is now after I've completed the challenge. Oh my gosh, it was such a nightmare. Anyway, so you'll have just seen me uh, getting it wrong again. Um, uh, real dis real disappointment. Um, I noticed I noticed that the, at this point in the recording that um, I uh, my my sort of Al Al algorithms are doing it strongly, but the idea of swapping things around or, or sort of moving things around to generate the best possible outcome only worked and doesn't always work in every case. That there, there was sort of it didn't always the the swaps that were right didn't always get you towards the right answer. So um, I decided um, that uh, I decided to ignore this, which is actually the right decision. And move on and implement everything anyway. Um, and uh, you'll you'll join me again now uh, as I am experiencing the frustration of my answer being wrong and trying to work out why on earth um, uh, the thing that I think works doesn't work. And and gradually realizing that I need to um, uh, do something a bit different. So I'll, I'll join you again after that when I've got the right answer. So we can't swap anything from here and get a better outcome. Is that is that right? That surely can't be right. In principle, if we shuffle these, we should get different. We should get different outcomes. So let's try that. Let's try starting with different outcomes each time. It does it in place. Yeah, so we're not we're not getting the perfect one. It's in it's it's getting good outcomes, but it's not quite the perfect. There's some, there's some attempt, some, some operation. It doesn't know how to do. And sometimes we end up with the sort of lottery ticket of getting the right number out, which I assume is the right number. I haven't seen any higher than sixteen oh one yet. Sixteen, seventeen. That's higher.
Let's try 1617. It's a little dubious, isn't it? Um, but let's give it a go. Uh, all right, let me just sort this out. That's right. So the sum, the sum operation that we're missing in our in our one. Let's take a look at part two. So that was that was what needed to happen. Um, my first attempt was was, was incorrect. Um, my second attempt of taking a particular sequence and trying to improve it through swapping items around or in some other way manipulating the sequence and then taking the best version of the variance that I got, that did work to strongly improve um, any particular sequence and make it the strongest version of that sequence that could appear given the initial starting um, constraints. Um, but it did get stuck in some local maxima where swapping it, swapping items would not um, in a single step improve uh, the, um, the, the output of the, like get the right answer essentially. Um, and I worked out after after analyzing a little bit afterwards that if you look at one of the ones that gets stuck versus versus the one that is right, it requires two steps, and that that's the first step there makes it seem worse. Uh, it gets a worse score. So my assumption that you could um, that each swap that got closer to the solution would um, uh, get a better score, and so we could follow that, was was incorrect. It was not entirely correct. Well, it was incorrect, but it was sort of correct in the sense that it got us pretty close, um, but that there were still some things that a single step couldn't get us to, and so we were led down the path of kind of combinations again, uh, which is, you know, not, not great, and actually you sort of need to go quite far actually to get the right answer every single time. So um, what I ended up sort of concluding was that, yeah, there are these local maxima and the best thing to do is just try a bunch of, um, you don't need to try that many, like 20 different attempts at the sequence usually gets you pretty, you know, the right answer, maybe like a few hundred attempts gets you the right answer pretty much guaranteed um, or at least to a high degree of probability. Um, and so I just ran it a bunch of times and, and I said, you know, that was how I got the answer this this time. Uh, and that's the, that's the best that I've got so far. I'm looking forward to researching it after this. Um, I'm now going to attempt part two, which went very much better, essentially the same approach. And I explained a little bit more about what I've learned at the start of that. Okay, so in my break, I see, tried to see if I could um, find a way to convert these sort of pathological sequences into good sequences um, without just mindlessly shuffling them, uh, and I couldn't. And the reason I couldn't is because they are, according to the process I have at least, genuine local maxima uh, that need to be sort of jostled out of. Um, I, I'm reasonably sure that I've got this one wrong. Um, I'm getting the right answer, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I just don't really wanna live too much longer in this horrible world that I've made for myself. So I'm just gonna, um, keep with the brute force approach. And um, shift on to task two, uh, which I'm just going to have a go at. So essentially in this one, we I think the only thing that's different, let me just share my Excalibur with you. Um, I think the only thing that's different here is that... Um, <clears throat> is the, the, the calculation of the value of a particular sequence. Um, so the way I'm gonna model this, I'm just gonna take the first half of the list, have that be the elephant's one, and the second half of the list, have that be my one, change the calculation and the logic should, the, the sort of Monte Carlo sort of logic, optimized Monte Carlo logic um, should still apply. Uh, but we will see. Um, I don't know, I think enough about this problem to plan it out any better than that. So. Um, it's going to have to be that. Um, 
And then I'm looking forward to researching this one afterwards and I'll probably do a little bit of a follow up. So um, let's shift over and start running part two. Um, and let's start creating a, a, a new version of this. Or rather, actually, I think I'm just going to refactor this. Or re, re, I'm just going to change this. Um, so for this one, we um, uh, essentially want to cut it in two. And just for extra fun, we've got um, it's not an even number. It's an odd number. So um, I'm just going to have the my steps to be steps zero through seven and then elephant steps to be steps um seven through 15 or essentially i should probably have this be kind of uh len steps over two uh, and this one be like this so let me try this with a 15 length list let's call the steps and then that gives us the first six and that gives us the last one so the len here should be eight the len here is seven okay that's good and in any case the i think the we can try kind of either combo and see if either one gets us better answers. So um, let's have this be if true, else we'll just kind of flip these. Okay. And then we want to move. We want to go through. Um, I suppose we can go through this twice. With minute being reset every time. Yeah, I think that will work. Okay, and then, so we need to reset the minute at this point. So let's have this be here and this be here. And can we get those out? Um, yeah, we're going to reset the end. And then we should reset this as well. Probably we should reset this here rather than at the end, just in case I get into any trouble. Okay, and we're going to have to change 30 to... Um, this... This one will need to be 26, not 30, because we need to teach the elephant what to do. So that's that. Um, so we've got an error somewhere. Oh, I've just not run it in a while. 
Okay. And we're going to try this with the trial data, not the real data. Okay, 1707. Fine. And we're getting it consistently. Okay, that's a pretty good sign. Two one two one seven one. Let's try it out. I'll be it'll be a literal Christmas miracle if this is right. Two one seven one. Wow, incredible! Wow, what a what what a true uh, nightmare that was. Um, second step was pretty decent, I suppose, but the first step was an absolute nightmare. I don't know if the Monte Carlo way is the best way. Um, I think probably the best idea that I had was to um, essentially start by calculating the value of the um, the sequence and then just trying to maximize from that. N not sort of, I think a lot of the graph stuff was useful when it was done, but it was, that was the sort of bit that really got me stuck. Try to be a bit too clever with my graph stuff. Probably should have realized that was impossible. Probably should have planned out better. And I'm going to sort of rethink the, the planning step. I think I do need a bit more com computational power in my planning step. So I'm going to see if I can bring that in. Um, I'm so glad this is over. I'm really looking forward to seeing what my colleagues made of this one.